over seven million different animals inhabit our planet. So, Angie, do you think we really need to describe what a lion looks like to the listeners? I don't know. I, <laughs> like... <laughs> I thought about that. I, um, I mean, I think, of course, we'll... What can they teach us? Yeah. But for the most part, yes, they uh, sleep. They uh, they do a lot, just like your house cat at home, my friends. They uh, they definitely do a lot of sleeping. And many species are in crisis and need your help. Join the movement at allcreaturespod.com. Welcome to the All Creatures Podcast. This is Chris. And I'm Angie. Hello from across the United States, Angie. <laughs> wow, you're like 3,000, 4,000 miles closer than normal. Still yes. far away. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, but I'm not on the other side of the earth. Yeah, I um, unfortunately have some family issues come up. So, And I know we've been a little slow on the podcast lately. We will be back to normal here pretty quick. We just... Um, yeah, I have to get through some issues and get our schedule set. And then Angie and I will be uh, trying to get back to the news and interviews. We have some interviews lined up. We've already recorded a few that uh, were ready for future species, but we definitely had to record this week, right? Oh, absolutely. And interestingly yeah. enough, you're talking about families. And today right. we're highlighting uh, one of the animals that is well known for their family mm -hmm. interactions and their pride. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, there you go. <laughs> Your little mm -hmm. jokes. Yeah, so I don't know what it is. And they roar, right? They they're roar. the only cat they're the only cat that is social, right? Yes. Or in a social group setting, I guess, or a family group setting, right? Absolutely, yes. And there yeah. will if you stick with us long enough, there will be a roar off perhaps later on. <laughs> okay, okay. So ooh, there's a little hint. Maybe like the, the hippo off. Um but but it's not I don't know, maybe bring Corbin in for that one. All right. So do us a favor this week. So I want you to check out some of these other animal focused pods, podcasts. And, you know, we, we, we love that you listen to us, definitely. But most people listen to two, three, four pods a week. So you don't have to just stick with us. And, you know, we always love to promote uh, other podcasts. So please, and just see if you notice a trend this week. That's your hint, um, because we've all kind of collaborated on something. But anyways, uh, here's our collaborators this week. It's Animals to the Max with Corbin, as always, our buddy, friend of the pod, Corbin. Uh, Varmints, very good one. Strange Animals, very interesting one. Life, Death, and Taxonomy. That's, I love that and name. And then the Species. I know, it's such a good one. That's a good one. So check them out. Just see what you, you, you can kind of put the pieces together this week. What's the big puzzle? But, and, and if somebody uh, figures it out, what do they win, Chris? Breck. Um, a, a, a hug, bra internet bragging hug. rights, internet. <laughs> two thumbs up on the internet. Yes, bragging rights. Yeah, yeah, go on our Facebook page. So, yeah, the lion, Angie. This one we've been wanting to do for a while. I know oh, you have. Oh, we've been talking about the lion for months now. So I'm very, and especially yeah. since we've taken a, a tiny little break here, I was chomping at the bit to uh, to, to to record this and obviously to do the deep research about lions and try to understand because everybody knows general facts about lions for the most part if you've turned on mm -hmm. tv mm -hmm. or watched any animal planet or any disney shows there's a lot that in general people know about the lion so today our goal is to right. of course reinforce some of the things you might already know but hopefully you'll learn a few amazing facts about lions that you don't know and and you'll if Absolutely. you don't if you're not a huge uh, big cat lion fan the goal of the podcast is by the end of the day, you will become one because they are just an amazing, yeah. amazing, magnificent. Yeah, uh, they are. they're beautiful creature that uh, obviously many people fear and many mm. people in endear. And by the end of the podcast, you'll be on, you'll definitely be right, on the endearing right. side of <laughs> side. Hopefully. Yeah. They're, they're just, they're just big little kitties, right? You just go give them a, a belly rub. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, not so much. Yeah, yeah, no, no, are, no, no, no. They are stunning. And, I wouldn't do that. And they, and they do need yeah. our help. That is definitely, will be the take home message. Yes, that um, is very, very true. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess taken back and shocked. I didn't realize how low their population counts were. Yes. Yeah. It's, 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 it's really, really tragic what's going on. And, you know, the last episode we did a Big Cat was episode five, The Leopard. And Angie, I'll tell you what. We've improved a little bit since <laughs> <laughs> I go back. Oh. I go back and listen, and I'm like, 
I'm like, I thought we sounded pretty good, but yeah, I go back and it's, we're, we're kind of robotic and now I, it's just more organic. It's, it's pretty funny. It's pretty oh, that's funny. great. I should I have to go back to those old I don't episodes. know. I yeah. feel like sometimes if I listen to it, then I get too critical. So especially, I, I probably shouldn't listen to yeah, old I episodes. Although I, I, I think Poison Dart Frogs was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. We, I mean, we got better quick, but it was just funny. Well, I went back and listened to like I forgot it was the elephants or something, the rhinos. Oh and I was yeah, like, that oh would be my painful. God. That'd be painful. Of course, yeah, that's the, that's yeah. the one I sent around for friends. Like, how is it? And they're all like, oh, it's gr- great. Good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So stay tuned because at the end, I'm going to answer this question. And I asked Angie and she did. She she pulled out one of the good things. Why are lions called king of the jungle? And Angie's like, it's not even, they don't even live in a jungle. Yeah, I was oh, offended by the, the jungle. Reason. I couldn't even, that, yeah. that hurt my brains. But, I, but I'm going to stay yeah. tuned so I learn the answer for yeah. sure. I will be yes. here. Yes, yes. There is, there is a reason that's called jungle. So okay. it, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. So, Angie, do you think we really need to describe what a lion looks like to the listeners? I don't. Know. I <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> I thought about that. I um. I mean, I think, of course, one of their iconic features is their mm. their mane. The the males mm-hmm. have only males have them, and they're the yeah. black, tough, big, big, furry, gorgeous manes that uh, the males yeah, or red or golden. Yeah, they, or... they change a little bit. Yeah, they're uh, and, yeah, and they yeah. um. The males grow them when they're about three three years old, and yeah, mm-hmm, they can. Mm-hmm. They I think of black, but you're right; they can be blonde. There's definitely variations in in the red. Yeah, they're. You know what got me with them, Angie, is the first time I was across a uh, cage wire from a lion at the Austin Zoo, and I about died. He was so big, and I think this one, his name was Leo, and his that, paws were as big really as my original. head. That's really original. I mean, my chest, really, my chest. Sorry, sorry. I know, I, I know. But he was a rescue from like some side circus or something. But he, holy smokes, his paws were, I guess, as big as my chest. They were, they were enormous. Oh, yes. Enormous. Yes, their size, yeah. their size is what's, I mean, they're gorgeous creatures um, to begin with, mm-hmm. but their size is, mm-hmm. is very, very impressive. And not only standing mm-hmm. next to one uh, and seeing the size of the paw and the nails and the teeth and all of that. Feeling mm-hmm. their hot breath, but having one roar in your face as well is. <laughs> oh God, I, I've not had yeah, that happen. I thank mean, God. That is, they <laughs> definitely, yeah, they are impressive, impressive creatures. Yes. Which is probably some of. I mean, that unfortunately has led to some of their demise with uh, human animal conflict because once again, people fear them, or mm-hmm. eh, not necessarily. Maybe people don't fear them, but they don't like when they get you know, hurt their livestock crops and things like that. So Right, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of human conflict. Yeah, they get, I mean, they get, they're get. they like four and a half to six and a half feet long or one and a half to two meters. They can weigh, you know, 265 to 420 pounds. That's almost 190 kilograms. They, now, Angie, let me ask you this. Do you know which lion, here's Dr. Uh-oh. Angie on the, on the spot. The, ma- the males tend to not have manes or they're very, very scruffy and short. Uh, what was the quote? Anywhere. And okay. So there are male lions that when they're older and mature, their manes are under, under underdeveloped or not developed at all. Is this a true where? false question? That's true. Where? Oh, where? where? So, Do you know where? Sorry. It's been a long, you, it's been okay. a long week. No, I know. Friend. You just, uh, I know. You just got back off a flight. Right? I did. I did. So, I'm a little jet lagged. <laughs> um, where? Oh, I, I have heard of this. Yeah. Um, Do you remember in the 1800s, was it, when the Brit- British were building a railroad there? Maybe some grevy zebras might be near there. Kenya! And, and Kenya. So the Savo lions. Mm-hmm. I did yeah, the Savo lions. lions. Yes, I have yes, about this. Yes, yes. Thank you. Yeah, so I looked it up Sheesh. and I was like, yeah, it was really that cool. Was so pain- it was the, that um, was painful if anybody had to listen to that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, but it, it, what was the movie? Something in the Darkness. It was, oh, it, it was about the hunters that they took to took out these two lions. They're at the Chicago Museum. Didn't you see them? Mm. Those two male lions? They're like the man eaters. They're supposed to kill like 160 people. Yeah, or I've heard a lot about the man eaters. The ghost. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. The ghost in the That's darkness. The That's the name and of the movie. I read about that movie. It, yeah. This, but I've already. Yeah. I've already forgotten it. So the males in Savo do not have manes because it's so hot, desert-like, that they've actually just evolved not to have yeah. manes. Sure. It's just too hot. That makes sense. Right. 
Yeah, so there you go. There's a factoid that a lot of people didn't know, including Dr. Totally Dr. didn't. I mean, I got, yeah, it's like I either, <laughs> I, I definitely would not get it right on trivia. I maybe had it in my brain, but it got shoved yeah. out for other really important information, like how much diapers cost or something like that. <laughs> where to get the, where to yeah. get the cheapest diapers. Hey, sh- yeah, I, I, I got to give a shout out to my friend, Jesse and Bryn. Uh, we did uh, my, one of my last nights in New Zealand before I had to head home. The, uh, we went to trivia night and I saved the team. It was like some word mix of a movie character. It was really bizarre because me, me and Jesse are Americans. So the American stuff was, was easy for us to get, but it was Forrest Gump. Like, and I just yelled it. I'm like, Forrest Gump. They're like, shut up, shut up. And they had to write it down and run up to the guy. So anyways, yeah, it was a fun night, trivia night. Okay. So Habitat, the, this is where I think Angie, you're right. It's so surprising when you look at their historical range and now you look at their current range. Because historical range, they're pretty much all over Africa, except really the deep Sahara and the Correct. deep Congo. Yeah, deep jungle, deep right? desert. That's I mean, where they they didn't penetrate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They were all around the coasts of the Middle East or Southwest Asia. They even think they went into Turkey, a little bit into Europe, and yes. then all the way to India. Like nobody nobody thinks no, of the Asiatic that's lions, you right? I talked about before we started the pod is I, uh, I want people mm. to take home – the message that, of course, we all think of Africa lions and, and yes, their populations are crashing mm-hmm. and we'll get more into that in conservation. But there's an Asiatic lion. Yeah. Well, and the Asiatic lions are, they're a little, they're even a little smaller than African lions and they have, they do maybe because of the heat have the shorter mane and uh, thicker elbows and tail tufts. But it's important to note that they're critically endangered, Chris, critically endangered. Uh, their current population yeah. is estimated yeah. to be yeah. about only 350 animals. And as you mentioned, they live in one park in India. It's called India's Gir Forest or G-I-R. I might not be pronouncing that right. So there's definitely, um, and mm-hmm. I'll, I'll mention one of the conservation groups that's fighting to save these guys towards the end of the podcast, but they're, they're out there and, their population has just been so fragmented and, you know, obviously due to, to humans and other issues, that's all the remains of the classic Asiatic line that, like you said, used to, mm-hmm. you know, all the way, all, all the over, way. all yeah. over Asia, yeah. all the way from India, all the way back to Africa. And it's just, yeah, it's just crazy. And now we're it. watching a, the, the potential population crash or demise of the iconic African African, lion. Yeah, the ones in Africa. You know, I remember at San Diego Zoo, I don't know if they still have them because obviously predators don't live as long. We'll get to that. But they did have Asiatic lions. So that's how I remember uh, a long time ago. Yeah, okay. I think it was back when I was in college or something when I went. So it was probably, you know, last century. Um, so, yeah, very interesting with their habitat and their evolution. Now, we've covered evolution in the leopard episode. So, you know, I, that's why I like to do it a lot in those episodes. So if you really are nerdy about it, like I am, you can go back. Like but really, the general- really nerdy. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's super yes. interesting. I always learn a lot. It is, it is. And there's going to be more. There's going to be more of this because, you know, this is the Panthera lineage. That's the one we've already talked about with the leopards, the lions, the tigers. And, you know, there's 37 different species of cat, wild cat, domestic cat, now, the scientific name of lion is Panthera leo. So if people didn't know leo, the sign of leo is the lion, right? Now, evolutionary speaking, their last ancestor died out about 125,000 years ago. So the, the lion we had today in their final, and in this current form has been around for about 125,000 years. Okay. Pretty long, long time, you know, yeah. it's probably about... Yeah, but as long as humans. I don't know how humans, but 100, 200,000 years. So they they used to live in Southern and East Africa. That's where they evolved. Now, they did evolve into the two species, subspecies that are still here today. So you have Panthera leo leo. And these are the ones that actually left Africa 25,000 years ago to go to Asia. Mm-hmm. So it took them about 25,000 years to get over there. And now they're pretty much extinct everywhere except that one little pocket. So then they're also in North Africa, West Africa, and Central Africa. Now, the lions that are in East and South Africa are a different subspecies, and that's Panthera leo melanchata. And this was a really cool fact about evolution. And this will be my last little evolutionary fact. The American cave lion, Angie, used to roam from Canada to Peru 
And it was there. It was actually a subspecies of today. You know, so there was an extinct relative to today's lion. And they died out about 10,000 years ago. And that was when, the, for whatever reason, I think you and I need to talk about this sometime, this mass megafauna extinction in the Americas that happened. Yes. And, it's, and I go to our museum and I just... Mm -hmm. I love going through, well, I don't love it because it's like, yeah. what the heck happened to all these animals? But going through the extinct species of rhinos and giant sloths yeah. and giant armadillos and yeah. it is, and they have, you know, they have the makeups that look what they would have looked like or whatever. Right, right. And it's just crazy. I mean, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, what happened? Yeah, I know. I know. I don't know. I, it's something I've seen one. I mean, humans probably hunted out some of them. Yes, some. But I don't think... I don't think humans could have hunted out, out all of these large. I don't large think so. I mean, you think no way. Mammals. There's no. There was something. No there was something. I think that, I did read something about it being like a a small asteroid impact or something might have had an effect. So I don't know. I don't know. It's it's yeah. We got to research that one day. Final fact: uh, We've already talked about the largest cat ever. That was Smilodon. You know, five to eight hundred pounds. Stand it stood about forty seven inches at the shoulder, but the American cave lion was almost as big. So there you go. There's some, wow. something new. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Angie, it's a tough life being a lion, huh? It is. I've had the, I've yeah. had the pleasure of seeing them in Africa um, on two different mm -hmm. occasions. And both times they were hard to spot because they blend beautifully yeah. into the grasslands, um, especially during the dry right. season with their brown, brown tannish coats. Uh, mm -hmm. So how they were hard to find, but guess what they were doing? Sleeping, right? Sleeping. Yeah, that's all they do, right? That's all they do. That's all they do. And everybody's, everybody wants to go see lions in yeah. Africa. And, and it's like, they, it's usually this like, I mean, it, it, it's not a letdown yeah, yeah, yeah. to see anything yeah. for me um, in Africa. But yeah, they're, uh, their behaviors aren't going to be as exciting perky yeah. as a lot of the other species. And of course they do do stuff. And I'm sure some tourists have had the luxury of either seeing them maybe at watering holes at nighttime, dawn or, du or dusk or dawn. Mm -hmm. Or of course the nature photographers sometimes can catch them hunting things like this or people that follow them mm -hmm. day in and day out. Some of these long-term behavior studies that you read about that where they've been studying prides of lions since like the sixties or seventies. Yeah. But for the most part, yes, they uh, sleep. They uh, they do a lot, just like your house cat at home, my friends. They uh, they definitely do a lot of sleeping, yeah. and but they're cool, cool animals. Yeah, and of course they don't. They sleep because they're conserving energy. You know, it's just as, that's what predators do. They expend so much energy in hunting, and then you know they they eat and gorge, and then digest, and then go out and hunt again. Except the male, the male, you know, probably a little bit more active patrolling. But Angie, you know, you talk about the ecological niche of the lion is so critical to being the top predator of Africa. I mean, it's just... Absolutely. Like, yeah. I mean, I really feel like deep down, it's one of these iconic species that everybody has a connection to. Everybody either read a story about a lion that they love or um, even from, like you said, an um, astrology point of view or religious point of view, just they're, they're just so embedded in our culture there's movies about them the lion king of course i just watched that um on on an air on, on the air flight to boston <laughs> yeah, yeah with uh with xander uh, for the first time and kind of seeing it through his eyes luckily he's he didn't quite understand some of the the not so nice things that happened in, mm -hmm. in that disney disney always has an interesting way of <laughs> having yeah, some, kind of, uh, some kind of negative thing happen to yeah, one's parents or whatever yeah, but that's a different topic for a different yeah. day but it's a great movie Anyways, everybody for the most part has a thought about a lion or I've mm -hmm. hopefully seen them one at mm -hmm. your local zoo. But you should care about lions, um, not just because Chris and I are telling you to or because they're so awesome or because you saw them in the movie. But num for the most important reason is the lion population has just been devastated. And approximately some estimates are 43 to 50% of their population has halved in 21 years. Yes. It's crazy. Oh, like, that's so sad. I mean, 21 years, that is not a long time yeah. uh, no. at all. Like, no, no, no. Uh, so that was, 
That seems <laughs> like for just, us old folks. I was say, that seems just like just like yesterday. I mean, the nineties. Yes. My husband and I were like driving around this past week, listening to like the nineties station on XM yeah. Radio in this rent a car that we had, yeah. and we were like, every song was just this classic hit. And my poor kids in the back seat were like, "Please stop singing! Please stop having a driving dance party with your arms." Uh, yes. But yeah, so funny. since the nineties, right? Since the nineties, their population has depleted 50% more yeah. or less. So that's, that's why we need to start caring. So what happened to the Asiatic population of lions does not happen, or it is currently happening to the African mm. lions, but our generation can stop it. We can use the next 20 years to stop right. this. So that's why you should care and keep listening. Yeah. But from another point of view, yeah. you could also it's also important to understand their ecosystem role, right? Lions are the top predator in their range. Well, it's not exactly clear to what extent lions regulate the prey population. They obviously do, right? And so, and if there is mm-hmm, a healthy mm-hmm. prey population, they're less likely to to harm livestock that therefore then reduce the human lion conflict. But if their prey population mm-hmm. is being wiped out due to poaching as well for bush meat and other things, they're having they're struggling more. Yeah, yeah. And you take out you take out the king of the jungle, like you said. I mean, the the down slot, the the downward spiral is unknown, and it's not mm-hmm. going to be great. I mean, we can no, worry. and I mean, it's you and I have talked about this before, especially with I think in the Red Wolf episode. You know, when they reintroduce wolves back into Yellowstone to keep you know the elk population down, it had a dramatic effect on in the environment. Absolutely, you know that all these other species depend on beavers and and all you know raccoons and all these other things. So a top predator, you, you, you just can't t- be taking all these things out of uh, these niches out of the environment and expect it to stay the same and not have a massive effect on other species. Right. So yeah, right. that's why you need to get Right. And, and then, yeah, and, yeah. La- and then lastly, I mean, there's huge economic importance to humans. Like if you mm-hmm. don't care about animals, you only care about humans. Well, lions have a really positive impact because they're a glamorous, well-known throughout the world, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. they're mm-hmm. a cultural icon in England, and they're a hot, one of the highest valued mm-hmm. ecotourism species in Africa, point blank. So yeah. without them, yeah. I mean, that's going to be a great economic loss to all the communities surrounding right. these reserves, or, lo- you know, whether they're a lodge manager or a jeep driver mm-hmm. or a, a guide that need these lions because yeah, people love lions. I mean, think of, yeah. I mean, how many, yeah. I mean, you and I, of course, are dorks. Like animals, yeah. Dorks. Yeah. But like yeah, <laughs> yeah. junkies, I don't yeah, know yeah, what yeah, the right word, lovers, animal lovers. Uh, but I mean, I can remember being seven, eight, nine, ten years old oh, yeah. and watching documentaries yeah, yeah, about yeah. lion prides and all the research efforts. And so they're just well loved. And I think that their the impact for economic benefits is very very well yeah we just supported in many scientific studies yeah you and i just discussed that yeah. on one of our more recent pods where mm-hmm. we talked about mm-hmm. trophy hunting and the pros mm-hmm. and the cons of it so yeah. i think that it is i mean besides the fact that like i just said they're just beautiful powerful creatures i think there's 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 so many reasons to care about them. So hopefully you'll keep listening yeah. to this podcast. If, if you're yeah. not convinced, yeah. <laughs> hopefully we'll have you convinced at the this end point. of the spot, right? Yeah, so they, in the wild, they, they only live, like I said, predators have a tough life. They only live eight to 10 years. You know, it's it's not this long life in, in the wild. And then and then under human care, they can live up to be 25. So, yeah. Sure, yeah. I was reading that uh, the oldest known lion was 30, yeah, which that that's is very, very old, old yeah. for a lion under human care. And- yeah, I mean, I think that's the thing is, and uh, people always, a lot of the naysayers of animals living under human care, uh, I always come back to the lion, for instance, as far as, my goodness, they like to sleep yeah. all day, they expend energy to hunt, um, and when you see them in Africa, or even if you can kind of like zoom mm-hmm. into some of the, the documentaries, mm-hmm. I mean, they're beaten up. They have flies all over them, cuts in their ears, flies hanging out their eyes. I mean, it's, it is a tough, tough life out there. And like you said, you know, you know, they don't, I mean, I was reading that some males can survive to be 15 or 16. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Interestingly enough, research has documented that in the Serengeti, uh, uh, females can live up to eight. Oh, wow. Years. Okay. Okay. So in certain. In certain parts, especially where they're monitored by humans mm-hmm. and there's more protective efforts, right. they can they can live longer. Yeah. But yeah, it's definitely not 
always an easy life to be oh, yeah. alive. Yeah, one kick, sure. one kick I mean, from a zebra. Remember, you said it's like a hand don't, grenade. You don't or, know when yeah. you're getting your. You're right with yeah. the droughts. Yeah. You don't know when you're getting your next meal. You have to work hard yeah. for your meal, and yeah. you got the bugs and the disease and all these other life. issues. It's a tough so, life. It's a tough life. But, but in the same instance, I mean, any any accredited zoological setting that they are being cared for mm -hmm. under. Uh, those guys are fighting for them to remain in the wild as well, whether mm -hmm. they're donating money or sending researchers or collaborating with researchers. Because everybody agrees that a lion sitting on, on a rock in Kenya is, mm -hmm. is where they belong, and that's mm -hmm. where we want them. Yes, yes. But, in, but right now we're, it's, a, it's a battle against time, um, against poachers and human wildlife conflict and other trophy issues. hunting you know we just talked trophy about it last hunting. week yeah, yeah i mean yeah. there's climate change uh yeah. like i said lot loss of predators because of poaching smaller livestock for uh for the bushmeat industry mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah it's uh easy. you know not easy. it is it's, not easy. it's tough it's not always easy being a lion that's for sure mm -hmm. now some of the the verbiage i mean obviously group of lions is a pride males are kings females are queens cu young are cubs how fast can they run give me an Ooh. idea um in a sprint because they sprint they can't run too, too yeah, fast too uh long. 38 miles an hour oh close 50. oh so 50. okay at, well, at, at full that's speed fast. Yeah. It is fast. Now, now this one I didn't. Th I didn't. I knew tigers could probably do this. I didn't think lions could. How far can they leap? Oh. I'm really putting you on the spot today. No, no, I love this because John and I were just reading about uh, yeah. some tiger, we some exhibit, and it was like, oh, they can jump this many feet for tigers. Right. And we're like, yeah. we're yeah. like, this exhibit is not that tall. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> our, our kind of our alarm bells went off. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. and this was National Geographic, so I don't know, 20, but it, it sounds. Feet? Yeah, it's thirty six. Okay, so like we had read something crazy about far. tigers that was in the thirties, and John and yeah. I were doing the math, and our head, we're like, "This exhibit is not thirty feet tall." <laughs> no, no, like I, yeah, I see those exhibits. And I'm like, they, they just jump. Oh man, yeah. So thirty six feet, but I know AZA in the states they 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 make sure. It's yeah, safe. they're often angled, yeah. or I mean, yeah, they they yeah. they know what they're doing. Yeah. So, but yeah, yeah no, yeah. And, and, a, yeah. and maybe that's like if they have like a huge running start and a springboard. Yeah, I don't yeah. Know. yeah. 36 feet. I don't know. I read that in National Geographic. So, you know, who knows? Sometimes I got to check those resources. Now, Angie, we, we were talking about prides, only cats live in groups. Generally, I read, you know, three males defend a pride. But I swear to you, if you love cats and you have not seen this documentary, you have to see African Cats done by Disney. It's one of their nature, yeah, well, nature the, movies. Put, I don't it know if I've seen that one. Put the link on the show notes because. Oh, I will. I, I It is. Is gorgeous it? yeah gorgeously shot yeah gorgeously shot uh followed uh, cheetahs and lions they had this pride of five males five males the dad and all okay, the sons yeah, that's a little we're going to take out another yeah male. i mean that's yeah. yeah that so that's insane yeah well chris that's that is really interesting and i, I need to check it out and mm -hmm, i mm -hmm. think the biggest thing for the listeners to they don't already know this is that lion prides are a fission fusion fission blah, blah, blah. say that five times fast fission yeah no fusion kidding. society okay yeah, there you go so what that means <laughs> yes. is that pride members can come and go and they're rarely all together at once but there can be anywhere from two to 40 lions in a pride and typically like for instance on average in Kruger or the Serengeti National Parks, of the pride size mm -hmm, was mm -hmm. about 13 lions. And the average composition, which was 1.7 adult males. So like one mm, and a half. Okay, I don't okay. know. I don't know which yeah, half yeah. it was. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, 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 and yeah. then four and a half adult females. I'm sure it was her better half, I would imagine. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And 3.8 subadults and 2.8 juveniles. And so I pretty, you know, it, it's probably rare to see a pride of, like you said, five five males. Oh yeah, crazy rare. It's got to be crazy rare. But what but what isn't rare is that males get kicked out um, after they start to become a threat to the to to um, to the the leader, the male leader. Mm -hmm. They'll get kicked out, and then a lot of time, these immigrant males will form coalitions, usually consisting of brothers, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it usually takes. Um, it usually will take a coalition of males to then 
they'll be nomadic for a couple years, building up strength, and then they'll seek to take over another pride. And they need this coalition of at least mm. two or more to basically sometimes take down the male that's right, there. Right. And so coalitions and studies have shown that coalitions of three of or four males tend to rule pride for a little bit for longer time, like three years. So in general, the male or males, whoever, uh, typically the, the male that is in charge will rule for about two years before yeah, he's taken that's it, out. That's so, it. Yeah. Right. It's not really a long, mm. not, not really a long goal, go at it. Mm-mm. Um, and they do say that coalitions, like in the video that you said, of uh, of four or more are really rare. Yeah. Because yeah. it's hard to keep them together. There's always, you, you know, you've got a lot of siblings. It's always, <laughs> it's, always, it's always hard to keep one in line. Yeah, right? exactly. There's always, that, there's always that one sibling. Yeah. We all have them, right? That's you. Um, uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's you and your family. My dad my dad used to, he had this joke, and it was so funny. He had this joke. joke he, there's three of us. That, uh, there was two girls and a boy. But he would always say, like, People are like, how, uh, you know, how many kids do you have? And he would always say, I have three, one of each. <laughs> and I'm kind of like the black sheep a little bit in my family. Yeah. So finally, you know, after years and years of him making this joke, it always makes people laugh. I said, I said, Dad, I, I, ha- I have to know. Like, mm. you always say, like, oh, you have one of each kid. Like, what does that mean? And more importantly, am I like the weirdo bad one? No, like, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, what is, like, yeah. you know, and he's just started laughing. He's like, no, my dad always said, because my dad was one of three yeah. himself. He's like, my dad. So my grandfather always said that joke. He's like, I don't get it either, but I always tell you what, it, it like lightens up the room and makes people laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anybody who has three, <laughs> three kids can make that joke or whatever. But anyway, so, but yeah. right, there's always one in the group. Yeah. And, yep. and so it's hard to keep these coalitions always together from the male point of view but yes they 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 often are needed to throw out whatever male is in charge mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and now from a f- point of view from the female pride behavior right that was all male pride behavior and mm-hmm. how they mm-hmm. battle and and they fight know. to the death sometimes like they'll fight to the death they do yeah. chris yeah that is yeah. also something for, you know for if kids are listening or whatever it it, it, yeah, it is sorry. it's not yeah. a, i mean the lion king, king yeah. is not an, it's not un- inaccurate right like it's it's yeah. uh they they will sometimes and 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 that's why lions rarely even during breeding season they rare like whatever one gets the female first whatever like mm. they rarely engage in fights because they know that it can end really ugly right yeah, and yeah. and sometimes it has to to take out the male and then often the male will retreat because he just knows but you know he know he knows he knows better but now interesting well then i just want i just want to say real quick too you, you know we always talk form and function and so the the main is really to protect their necks in fights absolutely Chris. so absolutely. it'd be interesting to see the the savo lions how they fight sure and if stuff, there's more you know, injuries or le- yeah. maybe less maybe yeah. less initiation or something yeah. of fighting so yeah they're yeah. not trying to yeah, fight but <laughs> they need you know that's the thing is the 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 dominant male in the pride is the one that's going to do the most mm-hmm. breeding and, and have the most likelihood mm-hmm. of passing on his genetics offspring so yeah. it is it is something that people, you know, that, that, that obviously and certain individuals want to become, but females are a little different for their pride related, related behaviors. Females are typically lifelong residents in their mother's territory. Mm-hmm. So the female pride mates, they don't compete or fight with each other and they don't display any kind of dominance that's been observed in many other matriarchal social systems. Um, so, and also two related females often have, um, the same reproductive cycle and they'll cross suckle their mm-hmm. cubs and all of this cooperative behavior encourages non-dominance, discourages dominance. Like they all kind of care about mm-hmm. each other mm-hmm. and they want to make it easier for communal cub raising because these, mm-hmm. mut- they all benefit from these mutualistic behaviors of, of keeping, their, giving mm-hmm. their cubs a chance to, um, to live long, you know, to live long and prosper. And they're complex. I mean, those are some complex. Oh, behaviors. I mean, that's why I just, I, yeah. like us doing a little, you know, splice of podcast about the, the pride behavior in general. Mm-hmm. I'm like, nope, let's just mm-hmm. watch, watch the, the movie that Chris is going to put on the show notes because yeah, we're yeah, definitely yeah, not yeah, doing just yeah, as, yeah. well. And hopefully too, when you talk to our lion expert that we're hopefully going to be interviewing yeah. here in the new future, near future, I'll want his expert opinion on a lot of the different yeah the, it's a very very mm-hmm. complex but of course well understood and has evolved for their benefit because yeah as you mentioned when we started this whole segment is they're the only cats that are social it doesn't it, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it doesn't really make sense with 
you know, what benefit are they, you know, are they getting out of it? And researchers kind of go mm. back and forth on mm. what is the benefit? And usually they think that some of the benefits of all of this pride, social structure behavior is once the pride is, if it's solid and there's a good male and lead mm -hmm. that it helps defend against other other lions, basically other prides for territory because mm -hmm, they mm -hmm. need a pretty they need a pretty mm -hmm, good mm -hmm. uh, size of territory to hunt in and to help them mm -hmm. survive. So yeah, just just you know, very very interesting social behavior. Yeah, very interesting social behavior and but yeah, in general they sleep about twenty hours a day and they become active in the late afternoon. So if you are on safari, that's probably the best time to see them. And pretty much they're just going to socialize with their pride and. Now, hunting will usually take place at night, which is why, or early hours in the morning when they can like ambush their, ambush their prey, which is why it's probably hard for us to yeah. like, you know, just to see, to see, see that, what's, yeah. what's going on. Uh, well, plus yeah, the nobody, heat of the day. I mean, they, you know, expending yeah, energy. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and of course I won't go too much into detail because I just can't do their it justice yeah yeah their communication and their behaviors when they are interacting the four hours that they're <laughs> awake yeah, a day. Yeah, yeah. i just can't do it justice but they have these beautiful greeting rituals of rubbing heads together tails looped in the air while moaning to one another i mean probably like what you've seen on the lion king uh or in other and uh, other uh, books or shows and Male, just like your cat at home, uh, males and females will mark their territory by spraying vegetation with urine and uh, scuff marks. Uh, females spray occasionally, um, and this behavior starts when they're about two years old. So, but it's, of course, uh, with our house cats, this is a super annoying behavior that we don't like, but in big cats, uh, it's really important visual and chemical chemical and visual signals to one another about territory mm -hmm. or whether uh, what their mm -hmm. breeding status is. And mm -hmm. the king of the jungle is, of course, known for their vocalizations. Uh, they're roaring, right? right? Um, so a male lion starts to roar at about one year of age, and a female starts shortly after that. And with the right mm -hmm. conditions, a lion's roar, Chris, how far do you think it can be heard through the savanna? Oh, God. Um, two clicks? I don't know. Five miles or eight kilometers. Oh, yeah, like I can't okay. run that far. Forget about it. So, yeah. yes, it's yeah. very, you know, on a, on a good, clear day, that's, that's you know, he's he's claiming his territory across, across I was eight just, kilometers. I, you know, I was, I was just telling somebody the other day about Allison. And, you know, people, if you have not heard Allison Kennedy Benson's interview, please go listen to it. She is phenomenal. And she talks about her experiences in rhino relocation. But I was just talking to somebody the other day. Because, you know, I would love to do documentaries on, on these conservation experts that we interview and how she was in that boma by herself and she heard the roars and they kept getting closer and the gruffs and they kept getting closer and closer. And then they were outside the boma and all she worried about, bless her heart, was how to protect her I her, know. Her I rhinos. just got goosebumps. She's such a good soul. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I know. It's, yes. And I, yes. I am, I'm not. And I love Allison to pieces and she is amazing because when mm. I heard lions outside my tent, when I was in Tanzania, I, I didn't care about <laughs> anybody else. I'm just like, all right, it, do we have guards out there tonight or what? Because I, they, they are getting closer, but I think they were interacting or fighting or hunting. So they didn't, it didn't get super, super close, but now, mm -hmm. but I didn't have the factoid that, you know, for all I know, they could have been five miles away i just yeah right yeah but way, yeah, yeah, I know yeah when you hear that in your tent yeah, yeah. you're a little bit like oh snap what oh, in the yeah. world I, I i'm like what in my the world pants. i sign up for doing this research <laughs> holy i just i just want to look at wildebeest yeah. uh, but yeah they obviously um, yeah, but yeah. no it's really really impressive and um and yeah they'll stand or crouch when they're roaring and of course it's communicates with their pride members and their territory and it can be aggressive towards other lions Lions will also roar in chorus, uh, which they think might be uh, like some kind of social bonding. So now I, I guess you have an a, a, a expert that can roar I, really well, right? I do. In the house. I have <laughs> I have my uh, my fellow pride member and my, the king of my jungle, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yes, no. I I want to I want to bring John on if it's okay with the listeners. This, if uh, to have him on again because he this is one of his favorite animals. He's always I've always been the dog person and he's like the cat guy. 
which, mm-hmm. you know, I guess opposites attract, mm-hmm. for, rightfully so. So, but with that being yeah. said, he yeah. has worked with the um, Lions for years. And so, um, yeah, so right. let, me, let me go get yeah, him yeah. and then you can ask him some questions. Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah, yeah. to be up and close and personal yeah. to these guys. And he's back. John Mio. How's it the going? The king of his pride in Gainesville, <laughs> Florida. That's what Angie, that's how Angie built you up. Hey, so yeah, yeah, I mean, it's great having you on because, you know, especially people that that have worked with these animals, what is it about lions? Like just what is it? What, what draws you to that? Uh, well, the, the first, the interesting thing is, you, you know, Angie's introduction and um, your introduction of me. That's one of the funny things about lions is, and, and one of the things that I think people don't understand is that males aren't really in charge of the pride. It's a female run. Yeah, that's it's true. It's female run. Yeah. So uh, men pretend they're in charge of the pride, but really it's female dominated <laughs> and, and females are the ones ruling the mm-hmm. roost as uh, any male who has a, who lives with a, a significant other who's a female understands. It's, same, it's very, pretty much the same yeah. thing. So, uh, you know, what, what yeah. do I love about them? You know, um, they really are incredible animals. And it's funny because I like to say a cat is a cat is a cat. And so if you have a house cat at home, mm-hmm. then you re- you basically, to some extent, know what it's like to work with a lion. Except lions are much mm-hmm. larger and bigger. bigger. Yeah, much bigger. actually kill you if they yeah. wanted to. Um, but yes, the yes. cat behaviors you see at home are very similar to the cat behaviors that that we see with with the other big cats and specifically lions. The mm-hmm. difference, the biggest difference, is the social system, um, mm-hmm. which you guys are talking about, and um, mm-hmm. they are truly the only social cat. And I say that the only social cat, right. even including your house cat at home. I don't really think if you have house cats at home, you kind of know that they don't really need you. They don't really care about you. You're mostly just a servant for them, right? That. <laughs> yes, you know, yes. they're, they're not yeah. hanging out with you. I mean, you know, some people are like, no, my scruffy kitty loves me. Maybe, but yeah. you know, if, if you were to die tomorrow, your cat would probably eat you and your dog would not, you know? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Dog would mope. But yeah. The cat's it, whatever. Like, exactly. For a week. Just yeah. for a week. I, I just yeah. think that socialization, you really see it in the, in the lines. You really, and that's the only truly social mm-hmm. cat. And that's what, fascinates me about them that's what uh, i enjoy Mm -hmm. with them so working with them and i've worked with them in several different institutions and settings and um Mm -hmm. you have to learn not just about the species but you have to learn about the social dynamic of your own particular pride and then you have to learn how to mesh that all Mm -hmm. together so it's it's really kind of cool and for me i started to, to notice and get into this um I noticed with the different animals, the different prides I worked with, there was kind of a trend where there was a male um, who was supposedly in charge, but really the females would boss him around. And usually two females. And you typically have one dominant female who actually does run the group. And then a a female that's a little bit more subordinate. So when I worked with a a group, there was Kia was Mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, she was the dominant female and she ran the roost and she was really assertive and she would try to put, all the other animals in their place. She would put the other animals in their place. And then you as well are her caretakers in our place as well. You know, Max would like to pretend he was the dominant right. one, but he was just a really, he was afraid of her. And then he just wanted to be loved on by us. And, and when I say loved on, we did not get in with the enclosures mm-hmm. with animals. We didn't go in with them. It's just not a good idea because if they have a bad day. You have a really, really bad day. Uh, but they would, rub up against the yeah. side of enclosures. And, and if you did so safely, you could kind of interact with them uh, somewhat there. And then you'd have Monty, who was just a sweet, dopey subordinate who just wanted to stay out of everybody's way and, and just kind of wanted to, to do her own thing. You know, and you had yeah. these great relationships with them and you built these yeah. great relationships yeah. with them. And it was it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of um, great interactions with with these these enormous cats. And they, they all have different personalities. That's what like, you're explaining, different personalities, you know? Oh, and, absolutely. Yeah. Every, every single one has a different personality. Every every animal I've ever worked yeah. with has a different personality. And that goes, uh, that that shocks people, especially when you're working with animals like gazelles or antelopes, mm-hmm. who mm-hmm. you just think, well, whatever, you know, they're just... They're grazers, yeah. Lions. Yeah. yeah, they're grazers and that's all yeah. they do. Well, they had different personalities, but the cats definitely had different personalities, different likes, mm-hmm. dislikes, 
toys they liked, areas they liked to lay in, food they liked to eat, you know, that sort of thing. Um, the great thing with working with them is they they're a highly intelligent animal. You know, I, I really love. Uh, I mean, I love all the animals I work with, but mm-hmm. the intelligent mm-hmm. ones are so much fun to work with because yeah. they figure things out. They work with, they work on problems. They, you know, change their environments around. They really do all of these things. Right. And, right. Um, I got to work with them and do a lot of operant conditioning training, which I know is, is near and dear to Angie's heart. And she talks mm-hmm. about it a lot. And so training these animals is an incredible way to help them help themselves to help them with their own um, management, their own husbandry mm-hmm. needs. And, and the coolest thing mm-hmm. I've ever done by far is to help train not just lions, but mostly with lions where we did voluntary blood draws, which you know, mm-hmm. you go to the doctor, you're supposed to go yeah. to the doctor every, every uh, year, once a year, and mm-hmm. you're supposed to have blood drawn to check your levels, to, te- to check mm-hmm. the, your, uh, the statistics of your blood, and they can figure out lots of different things about your health with your blood. Well, we take blood for am- animals as well, but usually with the big ones that are, are dangerous, you have to mobilize them first before taking their blood. That can cause issues with the blood itself. It can change some of the factors within the blood. So if you can get a, uh, we call a blood draw that's voluntary, the animal just stays put, is awake, and you can draw blood from them, it's much better. Uh, you get better accurate readings of their blood, but it's better right, for right, the animals right. too. And so that's what we would do. We'd bring the the lions into this uh, little smaller kind of enclosure thing. It basically looked like a dog crate, essentially. Um, one person would be working at the front of the lion, training the lion, and then somebody would be at the back, and we'd actually could draw blood from their tail. So you could draw the take, tail, you could yeah, take was, their tail out yeah. of the out of the enclosure. We had a special slot set up so you could take it out of the enclosure. You'd hold their tail in their hand, in your hand. You um, hold it off just like you'd hold off your arm to to pop the vein out mm-hmm. and, and and kind of pull up the blood. Do the same sort of thing. You would draw out the the blood, and it would be it'd be good. Yeah. and it was an amazing experience, and it was all yeah. done voluntary. We would never force yeah. an animal to do that; they had to participate right. in it willingly. And so, working with these cats and using opera conditioning with them to help them manage, basically help them manage themselves, was an right. incredible experience. Yeah, and they get vaccines and other things, right, to to make sure they're healthy. Absolutely. Yeah. So at that point, instead of having to immobilize them or to yeah, which um, can be shoot dangerous, them with yeah. a dart just to vaccinate, yeah. you can do that in that same sort of setting. Vaccinations took actually a little bit longer because mm-hmm. when you're drawing blood out, it's not, believe it or not, quite as invasive as sticking something in, right? Right. So you get right. something in, injected into you. There's a burning or something like that. It's, mm-hmm. it's a little more invasive, mm-hmm. but you we could work them through that as well. So yeah, it was, it yeah. was really a cool, cool experience. Yeah. So I guess my final question, um, Jesse told me this uh, before I left New Zealand to come back to the States for a little bit. He said, John's favorite animal is the panda, right? Mm. <laughs> I love Jesse so much. He's such a great guy. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll save that for the we'll panda episode. Um, <laughs> pandas have, the, the images of pandas have done a tremendous amount for conservation and yes. an awareness of the issues facing animals. And for that, I really appreciate. <laughs> we'll, so we'll save it. We'll save it for a panda episode. Absolutely. All right. So we're going to have a, uh, a roar off right between you and Angie, like the hippo off, which you won oh. hands down. Uh-huh. I yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, I mean, so I don't know. Okay. I, just, I love Angie so much. She <laughs> she does so many incredible things for my life, and I, I, I but and you know when you have somebody that you love, you want to protect them, and I, and I do want to protect yeah. her, but at the same time, she just keeps putting herself in this situation where <laughs> I just can't protect her. You know, I she's asking for these things. She's asking okay, to compete okay. against me. When I've worked with these animals, I've spent. My uh, life working with these animals, so yeah. I, I've honed my craft in many different ways, and <laughs> vocalizations is one of my studied as, right. a, as a person who studied vocalizations. So I uh, don't understand why she does this, but she does this, and that's the way it goes. Okay, well, let's hear it. I, I will not even know who it is. I just want you guys to. Where's Angie? Okay, Get awesome. her over so there. We'll, yeah, so we'll go off. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll still we'll camera. Off camera. Yeah. We'll still have the mic. Go. And we'll, we'll yeah. go from there. Okay. And I'll, 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 I'll see who, who's first and All one right. and two. Okay, go ahead. Oh, hold on a second. Okay. Oh! 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 <laughs> oh! 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 
<laughs> oh my god. This is too funny. This is too funny. Wait, where are we going? <laughs> well? I'm sorry, John, you lost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? I think you lost after all that build up. What? <laughs> I just Well I he, Yeah, well we have to I well I'll have to splice in the real one next. Yeah. He he went oof and you were more Arr. I don't know. I can't do it. <laughs> yeah, you were you were a little bit more little, ar- you were that. a little ar- ar- more ar- woofy than normal. Yeah, I think it was more woofy than normal. <laughs> Sorry. Just a couple. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the hippo, hippo John, hands down. John, hands down, hippo. Hippo, you you, you whooped her. It was close. It was close. I'll give you that. It was close, but I think Angie edged you out just a tad. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Sorry. A lot more than her. Well, no, hippo heart. Hippo would be better, but okay. it's a little tough. Um, all right. I well, thank you. Talk about, so just a little bit about the vocalizations, though, not to defend myself. But okay. Okay. When you, hear, when you hear lions like growling or whatever, they don't. They, this is their this is their pride call. This is this is and that is more the the male is more of the one who does do the the, the call, right. which kind of gathers the pride around or gets responses, and, and mm-hmm. there is a sort of a call, an answer and response sort of situation that should be going on with that. Yeah, and that that's I was doing the male's initial response, and it, it okay, just, okay. When you're when okay, you're, when okay, you're okay. With them in person, it gets to okay. Me, I will say one okay. of the most incredible things in the world is to stand next to a lion while they're doing that roll. Oh God, it shakes yeah. your it shakes your inside. It is is something that you know nobody can replicate. It's it is incredible, and the really yeah. cool thing, um, which was taught to me by one of my mentors in the industry, is um, when you have a really good relationship with them. And you do the roar to them, you, they will, they will start to roar back to you, and they will do. That's crazy, yeah. That's you. cool. And it's really, really okay. cool. You can kind of get okay. the whole pride of lions going. Have you ever had them do that with you? Respond back to you? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. So, so here, here's the test. Here's the true test. The next time you two are at a zoo with lions, go off to the corner somewhere and start roaring. Well, and see so what it, it, it may or may not work with just random lions. That's, that's the thing. It may not yeah. work with oh, random they, lions they because know you. yeah, it's again, it's a okay. Kind of pride gotcha. Thing. So there gotcha. Are, gotcha. Gotcha. There are calls between pride. So one pride right. will call, but and they're they're sort of trying to keep another one back, but then they're not going to do a call and response to another prize. Gotcha. So gotcha. They may gotcha. Think I'm gotcha. Okay. Lion at that point. You yeah. Obviously. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> so they would, you know, they, they wouldn't be like, Hey, come on down. They'd be like, Whoa, look at that guy. They probably would go really yeah. quiet because they wouldn't want me to try. They would want to just hide. They would, they, I would probably. Yeah. So, so. <laughs> yeah. It's a really no, cool no, thing. No. So, um, you know, yeah. I, I have to, Admit defeat where I have to. So congratulations, Andy. It was it close, was though. I mean, it was it. Hey, it was close. It was I close. I just I, thought. I guess there's too much from, too much party this weekend is, is the problem. Yeah, yeah, and I. I should always. I should I've heard them early. Form before there's going to be a. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Enjoy, enjoy the rest right. of your Thanks, John. <laughs> yes, you too. <laughs> Oh, there goes John with his tail tucked between his legs, oh, head down. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, I had to be honest, though. He, he did think he had that one in the bag, though. So, I he, I was surprised. I you you came in strong, Angie. I well, gotta. He asked me if I if I wanted to go first, and I thought that was part of my strategy. I was like, I'm gonna let him go first, and then depending on how deep his call is or if it's you know how yeah. i might have to go in yeah. a little bit different you know I might, i'm gonna try to go i can't get points in the volume so or the the depth yeah. of it the vo- the roar like he's probably does sound more like a lion with yeah. the deepness i can't I, so i went more for style yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh well and i uh, you just sounded like i've heard the lions in the morning at the zoo so i've that's kind of what i've yeah. Imagine, well, here, you know, let, let, so it's, yeah, well, let but me he was, play a little close. bit for the listeners so yeah. they can make their own choice. Okay. All right, I'm going to go with door number three. 
as being the best. We, we both suck. <laughs> it's so hard to get that pitch, though. It's so guttural. You know, it's so deep. So I don't know. I go back. Well, John just had that oof, which I didn't. Yeah. He, I mean, he knows. He, he knows Lions Boy better than I do. So, um, yeah, it was good stuff. Good stuff. So Yeah, well, it's the, the best part is that Xander, our four-and-a-half-year-old, he, you know, the kids are like, what does a cow say? Moo. What does yeah. a, uh, you know, what does a dog say? Woof, woof, or whatever. Mm-hmm. What does a lion say? He, like, knows to go, like, oh. Make the, <laughs> he doesn't say roar. Like, a normal yeah. kid would be like, roar. No, no, yeah. no. He doesn't. He, he, he yeah, even that one you just, did was good. Even the one you just did was good. See, so you, you've got the edge on him. You've got the edge on John. Sorry. Thank Sorry, John. You. It's, I love it's, John. Uh, I love John's all those, brother. All those vocal exercises yeah. I've been doing to enhance yeah. the podcast <laughs> listening experience. Yes. Just kidding. I wish. I <laughs> uh, love you guys like family. All right. So let's talk about nutrition. What do yes, these things eat? Lots, lots of lots of plants and grass and lots Quack. of uh, brush. No. Yeah, I know. <laughs> they eat your they eat your they eat your favorite, Angie. They eat it. I know, they, and that's okay. It's yeah. the circle of life, right? Um, it, it's part of it. They are, but they're pred- they're predatory carnivores, right? And so yeah. they have to they have yeah. to. I mean, they're definitely going to eat zebras, but they eat wildebeest, and they'll. I mean, they. Mm-hmm. Warthogs, Warthogs, gazelle, yeah, I mean, wildebeest, yeah, we said the antelope. Now, I will say this: they eat my favorites too, Ange. Do you know where? Oh no, you ever seen that? Uh-uh. Botswana, really? Botswana, like juvenile, baby? yes, baby. No, uh, yeah, more young adults, really. But they can take down elephants. Yeah, they can take down elephants. I've seen it. Um, documentary: large prides, living in the desert, very tough life, and they, they just they, they chase it. Yeah, they just wear them out and they take down an elephant. Well, like that's insane. Is, that, is, that is, I can't even visualize that. I'll have yeah. to, you'll have to uh, put a yeah. link on the show notes. Uh, yeah, I'll see if I can find it. Yeah. But I do know that they frequently bring down prey that are much bigger themselves. However, this tidbit of it. Cape Buffalo. Oh, yeah, Cape yeah. Buffalo for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. This tidbut, this tidbut, this, let me try that again. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. This tidbit of information I found uh, really fascinating. I had I did not know this. The showy males, and I think what that means is the males with the prominent manes uh, of age, uh, have more difficulty hunting than females because they can't be as conspicuous. I mean, they've got these big, fluffy, black, brown manes uh, that probably doesn't hide them as well as the females. So thus, Chris, in general... Females in a pride do the majority of the yep. hunting. They do. They do. You know, oh, oh, yeah. I know. No, yeah. I know the the women, like John said, they run that. They run the show. Yeah. They do most of the hunting. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. That, yeah. 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 And now, uh, but interestingly enough, the males are still more aggressive during feeding than the females, mm-hmm. even though they probably didn't kill the prey. They still, you know, yeah, or like still, oh, I need my food. Well, they're defending the, you know, the males are defending the territory against other males, and so yeah, it's a give and take. It's but a trade off. Yeah, I did. Re- I did read that females tend to kill smaller or mid sized prey, and when the males do hunt, they go for bigger prey. So Cape buffalo, maybe a giraffe, something like that. Wow. Um, now, it was interesting too if. A single lion, at least this is data from the Serengeti, if a single lion is hunting, they have about an 18% chance of getting a kill. Okay, mm-hmm. so, you know, not very good odds. 18 out of 100. No, that's yeah. one out of five. Yeah. yeah. Good. Now, if groups or two or more are hunting, it goes up to about 30%. So it almost doubles. Okay. So, three, yeah. 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 So, I mean, that's where the the hunting in groups is definitely much more effective for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then. Which we all know safety in numbers, strength in numbers, all that. Um, Yeah. Yeah. There is no I in team. No, 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 no. (laughs) And the males eat, you know, it's about uh, whenever they do feed because they gorge themselves, right? They they eat ingest a lot of meat and then rest to digest the the protein. They can eat up to 43 kilograms or 95 pounds males at one city. (laughs) That's insane, huh? Jeez. The females eat 25 kilograms or 55 pounds at a, at a city. <laughs> so that is incredible. I I didn't I didn't under, I didn't know this factoid, and but it yeah. makes me wonder more about their digestion. Like, how does their stomach expand? They must have very oh yeah oh yeah. yeah. You see them with pot bellies, and that's just after they fed. Yeah. It's like you know, it's I mean, it's 95 just, pounds. That's that's a lot. 
That's a big steak. That is a big steak, Angie. I don't know how many ounces big, that is. Big steak. Holy <laughs> shit. That's, that's almost all of you. <laughs> so, um, yeah, me and then some. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Yeah. You're too okay. kind. Now, before we get to repro, Angie, I got something to pick with you. Okay. I really pick with you, but just say, hey. All right. I did not know this. Most male lions will die by the time they're like two. Only one in eight males survive after getting kicked out of the pride. Oh, I did not One know that. One in eight. Yeah. I was like, what? So on their own, what happened they have a very difficult, they just been difficult to survive. Okay. You know, or maybe they try to fight and, and like you said, they have to form those those bonds, but they're not primarily the hunters, right? The females are are more the huntresses. So yeah, I saw that stat and I was like, are you kidding me? So how, it's tough being a man. Right. A man. It's tough being a, a, a king of the beasts. You <laughs> well, know? definitely. And yeah, that's a lot. I mean, yeah. well, and then you, when we talk about recovery and life life intervals and life mm -hmm. expectancy, yeah, those are some bleak mm -hmm. numbers. And those that's not yeah. going to be a population that can just bounce right back if males are no, having such a hard all. survival time. Yeah. And but that actually rolls nicely into, in, into some of the stuff I found about reproduction. And just in general with lions is they're year round polygonous breeders. So obviously they males, you know, have the big, large and showy manes and have the opportunity to control reproduction with many females, right? Polygonous when they're actually ruling over the pride. And typically a male will rule pride for two to three years. So when he does become the man, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's two to three years. And so he's got to get his genetics inserted into the pride in quite a, a, a rather a short period of time, considering that uh, the female birth interval is every other year typically as well. So she doesn't always, a female's not going to produce a litter of cubs every year. And so that also leads to some really interesting behavior because this birthing interval is two years. There's often, and this is uh, maybe more PG-13, so if any kids are listening or parents are listening, you might want to- Fast forward a little bit. <laughs> turn, turn down the dial. Yeah, not the dial. Turn down the dial a little bit. But interestingly enough, um, in order, if a male is, does take over a pride or when he does take over a pride, there's often um, this called infant, infant infanticide. Infanticide, yeah. That's really horrible. Infanticide. It's really terrible to think and about. It's basically, yeah. it's basically killing of all the unweaned cubs mm -hmm. during the time of a, 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 takeover. a, a male yeah. takeover. He'll, he'll do that to basically ensure that he has some opportunity to father the offspring of the females um, during his reign. Because with the female, uh, with her having a two-year birth interval, she, in theory, wouldn't come back into season again or be ready to be bred again for another year, if not two. And so when her cubs are, are killed, she'll actually come back into estrus within two to three weeks. And therefore then, then the new male could breed her. Um, and so that's theoretic. That's what researchers believe the reason why this is seen. So being a cub can be tough too, depending on, you know, when you're born or yeah. what rain you're, you're born under. And so, yeah, I mean, that's just so much pressure conservation wise, you know, right there, yeah. it, it, there really is. And obviously this is something they've evolved for their own, you know, for their own genetics mm -hmm. and evolutionary reasons. And, you know, but that's the thing is they're, like, they're not super aggressive animals. Like mm -hmm. they don't fight with each other even during breeding. Like mm -hmm. they don't, if like whatever male gets to whatever female first, that's, that's it. It's fine. As long yeah. as they're part of the pride, that's fine. Yeah. It's just when a new male takes over that he's doing this to, to ensure his genetics yeah. pass through. Yeah. Um, so in general, though, males don't typically care for the young. But once, like you mentioned, they, they have a really, really important uh, role of being the protector mm -hmm. of cubs from other rival males and, and different prides. And, um, and then also, too, the male... If it is if it is the father, he has a big role of preventing the another male you know, right. taking over. Right. So big, yeah. A lot, of, like you said, a lot of um, and it, it's not easy being a lion. That's for sure. No, um, no, not at all. And now males are able to breed typically around five years of age. So that's a long time before they're able to become this dominant position to breed, especially if they're only living to be like what did you say, like eight or nine years or something. Yeah, not long. Average. Yeah. And females are are not able. 
to typically breed until they're about four years of age. So also a little bit longer m sexual maturation time. Uh, but they do, they will breed uh, throughout the year. And so once a female is of age, the dominant male will breed her and when she's in um, an estrus. And it's estimated, Chris, this is kind of a crazy factoid, mm -hmm. in my mm -hmm. opinion, mm -hmm. and probably in many, 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 many listeners' opinions. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, okay. It's estimated that a lion will copulate about 3,000 times Jeez. For, e for every cub that survives one year. Wow, wow. So going well, back yeah. a little bit, so when a female comes into estrus, now she cycles uh, year year round, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, she's polyesterous. So, uh, yeah. um, but so she only gets pregnant one out of every five cycles when okay. she is trying to be bred. Um, or yeah, so one out of every five estrus results in a litter of, of cubs. Cubs. And a male will approximately breed the female for the four-day estrus period 2.2 um, .2 times per hour for four days. And <clears throat> so that's where I think this high number of 3,000 times for a cub that survives. So I don't know if that's just how they've evolved, but it, it is, to me it's very interesting. And, and you and I being, you know, for fertility – gurus Experts, or whatnot yeah, like yeah. yeah i'm wondering a little bit about their fertility like why you know yeah. why does it take them one out of five cycles to even get pregnant get and pregnant then, yeah you know and then with that being said well, it's almost like che you know cheetahs are, are highly inbred so and i know i know uh maybe it was allison who somebody we interviewed talked about the inbreeding in tanzania because of trophy hunting and whatnot that you know there's just a lot of uh messed up genetics right so you know Reduced fertility is a sign of that. Yeah. One of the signs of it. Yeah. So these, you know, these poor guys and gals mm -hmm. are working very yeah. hard to <laughs> try to get babies out. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they're, they're, you know, boy, they're practicing a lot. Yeah. So it's just, yeah, you know, yeah. so it's just very interesting to me about the, I um, mean, it's a funny factoid for a cocktail party or whatever. You can make some jokes about it, mm -hmm. but you yeah. know, from a reproductive point of view, I'm kind of like, what's going on there. Right. That's, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I haven't looked into the reproductive uh, fertility of male lions and or female mm. lions, but I think yeah, like you said, there might be some something going on with inbreeding depression or right. I, who yeah. knows. But once again, all this does not bode well for their already um, dire declining populations. Yeah, yeah, and that that leads yeah leads right into conservation. I mean, they're listed as vulnerable. Um, the lions in South Africa right now are least concerned. The Asian population is endangered or critically endangered. West African is critically endangered. And anywhere, you said 23,000 to 39,000 left in all of Africa and right, just that yeah, one little park in, let's in Asia. That 23 to 39,000. That's it? Yeah, that's it. That's it. And the whole continent. Like this is the iconic and a little animal park in everybody India. knows. Yeah. Everybody wants to go see in Africa. Yeah. Yeah. That's not a lot. No, no, no. I mean, I, you know, elephants are at what, 100,000, I think it was, over 100,000. I mean, rhino, white rhinos are, are down at 20,000 and black rhinos are at what, 5,000. But yeah, it's just, oh, and then people are going to shoot them. I mean, just come on. Ugh, the trophy hunting. Well, Go I, listen to the trophy hunting if you haven't. It's well, a good, it's but a good yeah, episode. I mean, it, seriously, I mean, that's definitely one of their threats, but other really big threats include, of course, oh, yeah. you know, it's a minor one, but yeah. A human starvation attacks from other lions, infanticide. Um, which contributes to cub mortality, but uh, of course, indiscriminate killing in defense of human life or livestock habitat loss. Their prey is depleting due to uh, poaching. Poaching them is a problem for the bush, bush meat, <clears throat> and a really big one that we haven't touched on a lot. Uh, that's probably a whole podcast in itself. Is there's emerging threats to trading their lion body parts, including their bones mm -hmm. for traditional mm -hmm. medicinal, medicinal medicine in both Asia Again. and Africa. So that's, you know, um, these animals are poached with wires and snares and rifles and arrows. Um, they're also, mm -hmm. because it can scavenge, I don't know if we, we didn't really quite cover that in nutrition, but they will scavenge mm -hmm. leftover food if, if right. they're desperate, but they're, so therefore they're really vulnerable to intentional poisoning of carcasses. Poisoning, yeah. From, sometimes from yep. livestock farmers. 
So, mm-hmm. and then as Chris mentioned, of course, trophy hunting. So it's just yeah. like, ah, you know, and I think we, we talked, we touched on the end of the trophy hunting segment that, you know, they've got that issue going on, but I think it's important mm. to focus on a lot Address of the other, other sustainability yeah. issues because yeah. there's a lot, you know, there's, there's a lot of issue. It's very complex. It's not just one thing. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. that's helping or one thing that's helping them or one thing that's like hurting them. It's very complex and many, many, many yeah. layers to this complicated puzzle that has unfortunately been unsolved in the past years and horrifically declining with their numbers, right. you know, 50% of their right. population last right. 21 years. So, all right. Uh, uh, <clears throat> so before we get to organizations real quick, conservation tip of the week, you'll like this one, An- Angie. And I, I was looking for a good one. Energy tip. You should wash your clothes in cold water. It cleans just as well. And in actuality, the warmer the water, the less effective your detergent is. So Uh for stains, you want cold. Yeah, you think hot cycle, oh, it's going to clean better. No, it actually, hot cycle actually can ruin fabric or, or erodes it quickly. Now, I will say, if you were sanitizing something like diapers, okay, reusable diapers, you want the hot. But some of these newer washer machines you can get, they actually have a sanitized cycle. So it washes in cold and then it will run it hot and then rinse in cold. So if you have, you know, a washer machine, wash your clothes in cold and it cleans them better. Absolutely. And I've been doing it cold for years. I've got some real stinky boys in my family. (laughs) I'm... I'm John. a very stinky lady. I'll be the first one to admit it. I do a lot of exercises. I'm yeah. at the horse farmer all the time. I'm in Florida. It's the swamp. And I have seen no ill effects of washing the clothes in cold water, except for it's helped our energy bill out big time. Yeah, a lot. And our cl- you know, they make detergents so nice. And we use um, one that comes in a, in a cardboard box uh, with powder from, I think it's seven generation so we don't have to buy plastic that way and i mean i wouldn't i sometimes i do run them in hot once in a while like if yeah if i have a diaper in there or if i'm thinking like okay this is really you know i really need to sanitize this because maybe i don't know somebody wet the bed or something um Mm -hmm, it wasn't me mm -hmm. wasn't me but (laughs) yeah yeah, yeah. (laughs) Uh, but honestly they don't come out any better like uh, Mm -hmm. there's just really Mm -hmm. no need for it like you said unless you're sanitizing all right so who should we be supporting who are who are the big big ones Oh my goodness, Chris. I've been waiting for this segment. My besides the roar off, I've been waiting for this segment all all podcast. Do you know why? Why? Cause who is one of my favorite conservation dudes to talk about? Uh, besides my husband. Chris He's Mortensen my number one. Or John. John's number one. Chris uh-huh. Mortensen's number two. That was that Leo guy. I guess his name's Leo, right? So, yes. Yeah. So Leonardo <laughs> DiCaprio, Leo, yeah. is working with and also one of the, the founders or brainchild, or his foundation is, of a group called the Lion Recovery Fund. It's been in, uh, it began in August 2017, so it's about a little over a year old, and they can be found at lionrecoveryfund.org, and they have a great presence on Facebook. But what this is, it's a powerful initiative led by the Wildlife Conservation Network, which I think we've highlighted before. They're one of the big players with many, many programs and uh, projects. But the Wildlife Conservation Network and the Leonardo DiCaprio Foundation... <laughs> you were waiting for this I one know. for so long. I, 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 I saw it like... Four or five months ago, and I screenshot it on my phone. Mm. I'm like, I can't wait till I get to talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, no, it, it, it's very, very cool because besides it being part of the Leonardo DiCaprio Foundation, him doing amazing things for conservation, mm-hmm. what all actors and people with big, high power names should be doing, whether they enjoy conserving wildlife or plants or helping mm-hmm. people, I really think that people in power mm-hmm. should be giving back. Uh, people that have more should be giving back more. And he does this. Mm -hmm, And mm -hmm. so the Lion Recovery Fund receives input and guidance from an array of technical experts and partners in the wild. They work in over 14 countries. They have 28 projects, which I'll touch on in a moment, and over 20 partners. And they are a solution-based group. 
So one of their goals, which Chris and I touched on, is there's all these ha fragmented habitats that lions live in, which is potentially reducing their genetics and hindering their mm. survival. One of the solutions the Lion Recovery Fund has is to uh, protect and connect existing parks or reserves that have been fragmented um, and, to, and transform these landscapes where lions and other wildlife, because if you save the lion, if you save the dominant mm -hmm. predator, you're going to save a lot of the prey species as well. And then, of course, also mm -hmm. we've mm -hmm. talked about the economical impact that lions have to the people uh, the local people that live in the area due to the parks and ecotourism. So if you connect some of these parks and you work on uh, helping out the existing places where safe places and acquiring more safe places for lions to, to be, you'll inevitably help out people as well, right? Mm -hmm. For their livelihood. And mm -hmm. they are very clear. Lion Recovery Fund ain't messing around. Their goal is... Mm -hmm. Are you ready for this? Their goal is to double mm -hmm. the number of lions by 2050. Wow. Okay. Okay. And so that's crazy. Okay. They want to basically undo the damage that we've done in the past 21 that's years. 20 years. Yeah. 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 Oh, damn. Okay. I'll check yeah, it out. Yeah. So my hat's off to them. Every dollar goes towards conservation. They do anti poaching stuff, law enforcement. They help local communities live with lions to help reduce the, the conflict. Uh, their, their, their webpage is just amazing. So that's a www.lionrecoveryfund.org. They have updated stories. They have a really cool story section. And so recently, mm -hmm. like uh, last week, they posted about how lions are returning to Malawi's Liwandi National Park as their populations grow. Okay. And they have this beautiful story with the animals and they tell you all about how this, they give good news too, of like what some of their work right, is right. doing. And I mean, just a snapshot of some of their projects that donations go to creating an African lion database to help coordinate conservationists. So they're not reinventing the wheel. They emergency support for law enforcement and different reserves. They are helping uh, use incentive funding or money to help reduce human lion mm -hmm. conflict and support lion human coexistence. They are recovering lion populations in Angola. They are reintroducing lions into Malawi. That was one of the stories that I just talked about that was mm -hmm. highlighted last week. They're re rehabilitating uh, protected areas in northern Zambia. That's where Allison's heart and my heart mm -hmm. are as far as mm -hmm. some of the rhino mm -hmm. relocation projects. They're saving the Singal lions. There's not very many that live there, and they're trying to work on saving them. Maybe and this is, I, yep. I just listed off like, eight and there's like 20 yeah. so yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah i'm not surprised that my conservation crush hit the ground running <laughs> he obviously <laughs> picked a good group right. to work with and to back and obviously tons of researchers and scientists and of course really passionate yeah. conservationists to uh push this yeah. line recovery fund efforts forward so uh the minute yeah yeah, definitely. Yeah, go like check them, them on out. Facebook. Um, they they have a, yeah. a moderate following, yeah. but I think I mean they're still really new uh, as far as people knowing what they yeah. do. And, and the biggest thing is they partner with like a, a lot of the other lion groups I wanted to talk about today. They're partnering with them. They don't mm. want to reinvent the wheel. They want to yeah, okay. make sure their money okay. every dollar is going okay. to groups that are doing great things and of course their own projects. So right. yeah, Lion Recovery Fund um, okay. supported by initiative initiative by the wild wildlife conservation network like them on facebook too they're great and if you haven't already done it i highly recommend mm -hmm. liking the leonardo dicaprio foundation uh he's always some yeah. uh, really interesting yeah. stuff about climate change and of course about wildlife and things mm -hmm. that uh you and i are very passionate about so to answer the question angie that has been bugging you for the last <laughs> hour plus why are lions called king of the jungle all right first jungle is a word in Hindi, all right? But it means is uninhabited place. So it could cover the savanna. It could cover ah, any environment. It doesn't necessarily mean like trees and vines. Right, and dark like canopies. we think of it, right? So that is why the, it was king of the jungle. It's just uninhabited places. Now, obviously, lions are the apex predator in the, you know, from Asia over down into Africa. Hyena is their main competition. We kind of talked about that in the hyena episode. So, you know, again, there's, they're, they're still thought of as king of the beasts. 
Now, you know, first human interactions with lions, early cave paintings in France, and they find them like cave lions, you know, all these other things. But where they get the king part is the Sumerians who were in, you know, the Middle East mm -hmm. were the first to call a leader a king. So you're okay. talking 4,000 years ago plus. Yeah. And lions were the, were their symbol of strength. So like in England. Uh, okay. So thus lions started to be, become called kings. So there you go. The Sumerians. Uh, uh -huh. I love <laughs> King it. of the jungle. King of the jungle. Now we have to find the queen of the jungle and talk about her in future podcast. Yeah, you'll absolutely. To, well, that's really make fascinating, art. Chris. I, like yeah. I said, I yeah, yeah. always appreciate appreciate you diving deep into the literature because I just saw <laughs> that and I was like, that doesn't make any sense. I'm not going to Yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. King of the jungle. It's because of Hindi. There you go. You learned something new today. I learned a lot right. today. I learned a yeah, lot today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, well, and you learned that you have the better roar in that. I know. So. <laughs> it's a good, good night for this lady. That's for sure. John, John did say the, the females rule the pride. So we know who rules your house. So you That's go roar right. at your husband. Give him a hug for me. I will talk to you in a few days. And we will you know, try to put out an episode next week. And we'll see you then. Yes. And look, keep your eyes peeled too for uh, hopefully in the future, a really awesome interview with a lion expert. Yes. Yes. We got to keep, uh, I got to reach out to him again. So, all right. Take care. Okay. Bye-bye. Listen, learn, share. Join the movement at allcreaturespod.com.